This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It is June 21st, which means summer is finally officially here. What better time to dive fully into some baseball than today? We're going to do a full breakdown of tonight's baseball slate. I got seven games kicking off from 6.40 p.m. on or later over at FanDuel Sports. We're going to break down my favorite money lines for tonight. We'll talk about a strikeout prop and a home run prop as well, both in the same game, both. Should be a whole lot of fun. So let's dive on in now and get you ready for what should be a delightful night over on the Diamond. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire. Here to break down some MLB bets for today that I'm liking based on my models and letting you know where I'm seeing value over at FanDuel Sportsbook before today. Before we dive in, though, quick reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Wherever you get your podcasts, we are here uh, to the Covering the Spread podcast feed. We are here every weekday breaking down our favorite bets across PGA, MLB, NASCAR, UFC, coming up with Austin Swain tomorrow as well, all in the same place. So go search for the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you you get your podcast, and if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Also, quick fun announcement for the podcast here. You got a new way to consume both covering the spread and the solo shot. These shows now going up daily on FanDuel TV+. Plus. FanDuel TV+, Plus, of course, is the extension of FanDuel TV. You can download the FanDuel TV app on your Fire TV, Apple TV, or Roku and watch all of the FanDuel TV content that you love, like Up and Adams, Run It Back, and stuff like that, but also now covering the spread and the solo shot right there as well. So if you want video versions of the show, check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page or check out the FanDuel TV Plus app. And just in general, good app to download to check out all those shows uh, over at FanDuel TV, all in the exact same place. Again, FanDuel TV Plus available at Fire TV, Apple TV, and on Roku. Baseball season is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So don't miss your chance to snag a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel to Day. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only, $10 deposit required. Refund issued as is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42 in Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. Or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. In New York, one eight seven seven eight hope and wire text hope and Y. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's dig in now to the MLB slate for tonight over at FanDuel Sportsbook. We'll start things off with the three money lines I like most. The first one is in a game where you can get a better number elsewhere. So as always, make sure you shop around and I try to identify the best number. But even at plus 146, I show value in the Oakland A's to defeat the Cleveland Guardians for tonight. Again, the plus 146 is at FanDuel. You can get plus 160 at some other books. So as always, shop around and get the best number. The reason I show value even at the shorter number is because I've got the A's win odds at 44% to win tonight, which may seem pretty high given that they are on the road and facing a Cleveland team that has had some pretty big aspirations for this year. But there are a couple things pushing my model this direction. The first one is that Paul Blackburn has looked really nice to open this year using a slider that he used very little last year, using it more often this year. And it's worked out very well. 
Blackburn, the A starter for today, has a 25% strikeout rate and 10.9% swinging strike rate versus numbers of 19% last year and 9.6% respectively. So up big time in both those numbers. And that's impressive when you consider that two of those four starts came against the Rays and the Braves. So tough matchups. Blackburn looked really good in numbers that stabilize pretty quickly. They're not going to stabilize across four starts, but they stabilize a lot more quickly than results-based stuff will. And Blackburn's results have been good as well. He's facing Gavin Williams, making his debut for today. And Williams started the year down in double A, got to mo- promoted to triple A pretty much right away and looked really, really good there. Getting a lot of strikeouts, good results for Williams. So there is a reason he is starting for today for Cleveland. He did struggle with walks, and he's not a big ground ball pitcher, though. So it's not as if Williams comes up with a totally flawless profile. So he could come up and be outstanding right away, especially given that the A's have not seen this guy before. So there's no book to go off of for them. They can watch film of AAA and stuff like that, but they have not seen him in person yet. And I do think that does matter. So maybe Williams comes out and uses that debut bump to really obliterate a not very good offense. But the Guardians offense also is not very good. So to me, honestly, I think I'm just lower on the Guardians in general. And that leads to me showing value in the A's. So again, the number at FanDuel Sportsbook is plus 146. I've got this at 44%. So quite a bit of value there. Shop around and... um, uh, see what the best number you can get is. But even if the best number you can get is at FanDuel plus 146, I would still say the A's are a value there. Second money line for me tonight is going to be the Boston Red Sox. They are taking on the Minnesota Twins. And right now, the Red Sox money line is plus 112. I've basically got this game as a toss-up. I've got the Red Sox win odds at 50.3%. The implied odds of plus 112 are 47.2%. So... It should be 50 50 for getting plus 112 on the Guardians or on the Red Sox, which to me is more than enough to take a bite at the apple here. And a big part of why I'm lower on the Twins here is Sunny Gray's looked a little bit off recently. Don't really know a better way to describe it, but across his past seven starts, Gray has been throwing fewer breaking balls, leaning more on his forcing fastball and a sinker. And that's been okay from a results perspective because across those seven starts, he has a 3.50 ERA. So he's gotten through unscathed for the most part. But the skill interactive ERA for Gray is 4.53. That is a lot worse than what it was earlier on this year. And because he's throwing fewer breaking balls, it kind of makes a question, what has led to this change for Gray? And is this something he can reverse right away? If he can reverse it right away, then he'll be fine and we'll be good to go. But he hasn't yet. Most recently, his last time out was actually, I would say, the worst start in the sample. He walked four batters against the Tigers and uh, got yanked after four innings. He disagreed with getting yanked after four innings. He had a discussion with Rocco Baldelli there, but it didn't look good. And you kind of understand why Rocco made that move in that situation. On the opposing side, Garrett Whitlock has pitched well since coming off the IL, both in terms of his results and his peripherals. So I'm fine taking the Red Sox here if I can get plus money. Again, I would show value here even if they were to get to even money. It would not be a ton of value if I had them at 50.3%. But with the Red Sox money line being plus 112 right now, that to me is a very advantageous number. So I think the Red Sox money line plus 112, given Gray's struggles, given the Twins' offense's struggles, that kind of converges to me to make the Red Sox a quality bet for today at plus 112. The final money line I mind for tonight is on the Chicago White Sox. Now, this was plus 104 earlier on. It is now, or sorry, it was minus 104 earlier on. It is now minus 108. That is a definite difference. And you do want to make sure that you are accounting for differences in odds. And when you see movement like this, make sure there aren't any lagging sports books that haven't seen that movement as of yet. So the White Sox went odds out to 52%, 51.9% specifically. Make sure you can't get a better number than minus 108. But if you can't, I still show value there because to me, if you look at this game straight up, I think the White Sox are the better team. Factoring in starters, et cetera, et cetera. I think the White Sox are the better team in this specific matchup. So you put them at home, and to me, they should be more heavily favored than minus 108. Martin Perez starting for the Rangers hasn't been able to rekindle the magic he had last year. And it wasn't fluky. Like his skill interactive ERA last year, his expected ERA were both very, very good, but that has not carried over into 2023. 
uh, Perez using more cutters his past 10 starts, his skill interactive ERA in this, that time is 5.28. And that's kind of rough. And it's shown through in the results for the most part did pitch really well last week against the blue Jays. But for the most part, the larger sample has been less enthusiastic about Perez. He's facing the white Sox here who, they have not been as stout against lefties as they were in the past, but their WRC plus against lefties in the current active roster is still 111. Now, you could say the White Sox would get downgraded here if Tim Anderson can't go. Anderson has missed a couple of games, and I would bet he probably does wind up sitting for today as well, given he's battling a shoulder issue. But whether it's that shoulder issue or something else, Anderson has not been a plus contributor for them so far this year. So to me, it's not a terrible thing if Anderson does wind up, wind up sitting here. Michael Kopech starting for the White Sox. Uh, we talked about him with Pitching Ninja last week, how much more confidence he has right now. That star for Kopech didn't go very well because he walked a lot of guys, and he's in a tough matchup here. But now back at home, overall, things have been much better for Kopech. So even at minus 108, I still think there's value in the White Sox here. So to me, the Chicago White Sox, the, a solid bet, even at minus 108. As always, though, check around to make sure you can't get minus 104 still lingering out there somewhere else. So the three money lines I like for today are the Oakland A's money line at plus 146. Again, shop around for that one. The Red Sox money line at plus 112 and the White Sox at minus 108, assuming you can't get a better number elsewhere. The two props I like for tonight are both in the same game. Let's start things off with the strikeout prop I like for tonight. And that is between the Mariners and the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. And Johnny Brito coming back up here for the Yankees. His strikeout prop is currently a four and a half with the under at even money. And I think that is a fantastic number to grab with the under on Brito. Brito, I have projected for 3.6 strikeouts tonight. That is well short of this number. And in the big leagues, Brito's strikeout rate is 16.9%. His swing and strike rate is 8.4%. Those numbers typically are not going to get you to an over on a number that's not three and a half. And he's at four and a half right now with plus money on the under. Brito is coming back up from AAA. And sometimes you can see guys unlock something when they're down there, but didn't happen for Brito. His strikeout rate down there in four starts was 17.2%. So it's hard to assume that Brito has made this big jump when the numbers do not say that happened. And it's not as if Brito has ever been a huge strikeout guy to begin with. Brito has hit the over on this number three times in nine starts. So a rate of 33%. He is at home. He is in a plus matchup. The Mariners do love to strike out, but I think this number is already accounting for that. So you don't want to double count the matchup. And my numbers know what the Mariners strikeout rate against righties is. And even with that, again, 3.59, the projected strikeout number for Brito for tonight. So even a plus matchup, even at home, I think the under on Brito is the right play. Under four and a half strikeouts, even money as of right now. As mentioned, the home run prop is also in this exact same game. And that number is going to be on, uh, that bet will be on Jared Kelnick. Kelnick's number right now, FanDuel Sportsbook, uh, plus 450. It was plus 470 earlier on. So it seems as if there is interest elsewhere in Kelnick as well. But even at plus 450, I think this is a fine number. And I guess I'm a bit surprised to see Kelnick's number shorten because he's been in a big, pretty big homer drought recently. He has not hit a home run, or he's hit one home run in the month of June. And we're already at June 21st. So that's not ideal. But when you dig into the numbers for Kelnick, he is still making a lot of hard contact. In the month of June specifically, again, where he has just one home run, he has a 48% hard hit rate with an 11% barrel rate. And that barrel rate did go up last night because he had a barrel there but did not hit a home run. The issue Kelnick has had, and the reason why that batted ball data has not translated to fantastic results, is he's striking out too much. But as mentioned, that's less of a concern with Brito than it would be for a lot of guys, given we're on Brito's strikeout under for tonight. So it's Kelnick in Yankee Stadium facing a lower strikeout pitcher who has not been super restrictive with hard contact this year. That, to me, adds up well for making Kelnick a quality play at plus 450 here to hit home run over at FanDuel Sportsbook. I do think these bets play well together. So... I think you could consider potentially um, tying them together, seeing if uh, that would work out for you. Um, if you decide to same game parlay the Kellnick home run with the Brito strikeout under, it's plus 815. I actually do think that's somewhat enticing, given that a large part of the Kellnick analysis 
revolves around the low strikeout nature of Brito, and I'm taking the under on Brito's strikeout prop as well. So if you wanted to tie the Kalnick home run with a Brito strikeout under at four and a half, plus 815, the number over at FanDuel Sportsbook, I will not push back on you in that regard. I, as always, do tend to play things a bit differently where I prefer to place the separate bets and play it that way. But I think this is a unique situation where the bets do interact pretty well. And that, to me, is what I want. If I'm going to place the same game parlay is I want to make sure, A, both legs make sense individually, and B, I want to make sure they play well together. These two happen to. In fact, they probably do correlate pretty well. So plus 815 uh, for the same game parlay of Kelnick home run, Brito under four and a half strikeouts. I think that's a fair way to play things for tonight if you are so inclined. But again, the individual ones, Kelnick home run plus 450, Brito under four and a half strikeouts, even money, both those over at FanDuel Sportsbook. So hopefully it gives you a good baseline for uh, some solid MLB bets for today. We'll be back with you once again tomorrow and talk some UFC with Austin Swaim. I will also talk NASCAR in Nashville. We have all three series back in action for this weekend. We'll try to find some bets across all three series and see where we can find some value for this weekend. Do not forget to subscribe to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Also check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus. And just in general, make sure you download the FanDuel TV Plus app on your uh, Apple TV, your Amazon Fire TV, or your Roku app because a lot of good stuff there all in the same place. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB bets for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to talk some UFC and some NASCAR. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 